Hey everyone, welcome to episode 10. So uh, what we're trying to do today is simply ensure that these obstacles that we're generating will never arrange themselves in such a way that they actually sort of block off access to any part of the map. Like there, that's, we don't want that. Um, so a rough outline of how this is going to work. Um, over here where we are going through a loop and instantiating our new obstacle, um, we, before we actually instantiate the obstacle, we'll have up here something like a, a 2D array of bools, um, which we can call simply our obstacle map. Um, set that equal to a new bool array with the same size as our map. So um, map size dot x, map size, whoops, map size dot y. And we'll probably need to cast those two integers since they're floats at the moment. So before we instantiate a new obstacle, we will update this map with uh, the position of where we want that obstacle to be. Then we'll pass the obstacle map into a method called something like uh, map is fully accessible, and it will basically perform a flood fill algorithm to check if with the introduction of this new obstacle, the map is still fully accessible, and if it is, then it will go ahead and actually instantiate the obstacle into the game world, and if it isn't, of course, we'll just go ahead and try find a new position. So, before we do all of this, um, I'd like to, instead of just setting my obstacle count to 10 here, I'd like to give us a way of assigning that in the, in the inspector by means of a percentage variable, so we can call this our uh, our obstacle percent, and like the outline percent, we can clamp that to a range of 0 and 1. Um, and now down here we can say obstacle count is equal to, and we want to get the percentage of the total tiles, which will be obstacles, so we need to first get the total number of tiles, so that would be um, map size dot x multiplied by map size dot y, and we multiply that by our obstacle percent since that's between 0 and 1. So now we just need to cast this all to an integer, like so. And then if we save and go into Unity, we should get a little obstacle percentage uh, slider over here. And we can turn that all the way up to 100, uh, or rather 1, at which point it's all entirely filled in with obstacles. OK, so now let's go back into Mono Develop. And uh, now I'm going to say that the central square of my map must always be open because that's going to be the spawn position of the player. So um, I'm going to create a little code up here just to represent the center of the map. I'll call this map center. And uh, when we generate the map, um, one of the first things we'll do is to say map center is equal to a new coordinate. And we'll pass in... Uh, map size dot x over 2 and map size dot y over 2 to get the center. All right. So now let's go down here and uh, let's create a new method. We'll call this, well, we can return a type bool and we can call this map is fully accessible. All right. And that's going to take in that 2D array of bools that we created, which is our obstacle map. And it's also going to want to know how many obstacles have been created so far. So we can call that our int current obstacle count. Okay. And over here, once we've uh, once we've got our random coordinate, we can say if first of all, if the random coordinate is not equal to the, the map center, since we don't want to spawn anything uh, there ever. And if the map is fully accessible, and we pass in our obstacle map, as well as our, um, our current obstacle count, which is a variable we'll have to create, current obstacle count. All right, if those two conditions are true, only then will we do all of this actual instantiation. So uh, over here we can set our obstacle map. So we say obstacle map at uh, 
random code dot x and random code dot y is equal to true. All right, and uh, let's create that current obstacle count. Just over here, int current obstacle count. Oops, there should be a space there. That starts off at zero, of course. And each time we want to instantiate a new obstacle, we say that increments by one. Now, uh, if if we're rejected and it says you can't, you can't uh, create a new obstacle here, then we will have to say, okay, this didn't happen. So we'll want to set it back to false and we'll want to uh, reduce current obstacle count by one so that it's back to where it was. Okay, so now for the map is fully accessible method. Okay, so as I mentioned briefly at the beginning of the video, this is essentially going to be a flood fill algorithm. So how it's going to work is we'll start at the center of our obstacle map since we know that there won't be an obstacle there. And uh, we'll search all the tiles in a sort of expanding outwards radius uh, and count how many of them are non-obstacle tiles. Then uh, knowing how many total tiles there are on our map and using this current obstacle count variable, we'll be able to figure out how many non-obstacle tiles there should be. Then if the number of tiles that we know there should be is not equal to the number that we got from our flood fill algorithm, we'll know that the flood fill algorithm was not able to reach all of the tiles in the map because it got cut off by obstacles. So um, in that case, we'll know that the map is no longer fully accessible and we'll return false. Now, one thing that's important when we're doing a flood fill algorithm is to, uh, to keep track of which, of which tiles we've already looked at so that we don't end up looking at the same ones over and over again. So uh, we want to create a bool of the same size as our obstacle map. Um, so that's a 2D bool array, which we can call, uh, we can just call this maybe map flags. Okay, is equal to a new bool. And uh, for the first size, we can say this is equal to obstacle map dot get length zero. And for the Y, that will be uh, obstacle map dot get length one. Okay. Then uh, we're also going to want a Q of coordinates. You can just call this Q equals new Q of coordinates. And uh, we'll see how that works in a moment. So we want to start off by adding the center tile to that Q. So Q dot NQ can add in map center. And uh, then since, since we know that that central tile is, uh, is empty, we can uh, set map flags at mapcenter.x, mapcenter.y equal to true. We've already checked that. Okay, now for our actual flood fill, we'll say while q.count is greater than zero. So while there are coordinates in our queue, and at the moment there is just one, the map center, we'll say coord, we can just call this our tile, is equal to q.dq. So we just get the first item out of the queue and it also, uh, it also removes it from the queue. Now we want to loop through uh, each of the four adjacent neighboring tiles uh, of, this, of this coordinate. So let's do a little for loop. For int x equals, uh, you can say it equals negative one, while x is less than or equal to one, x increments by one. And uh, can do the same thing for the y axis. Okay. Then we can say int, we can call this our um, neighbor x is equal to tile.x plus x and int neighbor y will be equal to tile dot uh, y plus y. Okay, so this will loop through all of the eight uh, neighboring tiles. We only want to look at the four that are sort of uh, vertically or horizontally adjacent, however. So what we can do is we can say, we only look if x is equal to naught or if y is equal to naught. So in that way, we don't check the diagonals. Um, then we want to make sure that uh, 
the neighboring tile is on the map, uh, because of course if, if say our current tile is right on the edge and then we go minus one, then it will be outside of this Boolean array. So let us say if neighbor x is greater than or equal to zero and neighbor x is less than the, uh, the width, which uh, we'll have to get that again, uh, obstacle map dot get length zero and neighbor y is also greater than or equal to zero and neighbor y is less than obstacle map dot get length one. Okay, so we're essentially just guaranteeing that it is inside of the obstacle map. Then, if that's the case, we first of all want to see, have we already checked this tile? So we'll say if, uh, if not map flags, um, neighbor x, neighbor y, if we haven't checked this tile, and if it is not an obstacle, so we can say and not obstacle map, neighbor x, neighbor y. All right, so we've found an adjacent tile that we haven't checked yet, and that is not an obstacle tile. Then what we want to do is uh, we want to say, okay, uh, map flags, neighbor x, and neighbor y is equal to true, because now we have checked that tile. And uh, we will then say q dot nq new coordinate with neighbor x and neighbor y. So uh, as you can see, oh, I'm, I'm missing a bracket. As you can see, what will happen here is that uh, we, we find a new neighboring tile that we haven't yet checked. We add that to the queue. So then when this loop comes around again, it will then look at each of the neighboring tiles of that tile and so on um, until it's looked at all of the tiles. And since we're excluding tiles that are obstacle tiles, uh, it will sort of be blocked by obstacles and it won't be able to get past them. Okay, so we want to keep track of how many tiles we've looked at that aren't obstacle tiles. So up here, say int, we can call this our accessible tile count. And at the beginning, that is equal to one because we just know that the center tile is accessible. So in here, we say we found a new accessible tile so that increments by one. Now, once we've done all of that, we want to know how many how many tiles should there be. So int can call this the target accessible tile tile count is equal to. So there should be a total number of map size dot x multiplied by map size dot y minus the current obstacle count. And uh, we'll want to cast that to an integer. Then we can simply return the statement target accessible tile count is equal to the accessible tile count. Okay, so we've now completed our map is fully accessible method. So let's go back into Unity and we're getting a couple of errors here. The first one reads the best overloaded method match for uh, coord, which takes in two integers has some invalid arguments. So let's double click on that. So it says this line is giving us the error. Um, the map size is a vector two, which means that this will be a float, which means we want to cast it to an integer like so. All right, and the other thing, um, it's saying that the operator not equals cannot be applied to operands of type uh, coord and coord. So that makes, uh, that makes sense. Over here, we're saying random coordinate is not equal to the map center coordinate. Um, now coordinate is this little structure that we've defined over here. And it's obvious enough to us that for two coordinates to be equal to one another, their X values need to match and their Y values need to match. But we're going to have to tell it that explicitly. 
So uh, we'll want to define the equals and not equals operators uh, for this coordinate. So we can say public static bool, and we can use the operator keyword, and then we want to say which operator. First of all, the equals operator, so double equal sign, and if we'll take in a coordinate, we can call this uh, maybe C1 and another coordinate, which we can call C2. So we simply return c1.x is equal to c2.x uh, and c1.y is equal to c2.y. Right, then we also want to implement the not equals operator. So over here we can say not equals and very simply we can return not c1 equal to c2 since we've now defined the equals operator. All right, so if we save that, we seem to have got rid of the error. So let's just take this obstacle percent slider all the way up to 100. And uh, we can just look at this and see that everything is nicely connected up, no isolated regions. Uh, change our seed and still if we just sort of do an optical check, everything seems to be functioning as it's supposed to. So uh, one thing I should mention is that uh, at the moment having having map sizes that are not integers, say for example, um, let's see, 10.5, um, it's going to give us an array index out of range exception, um, but Basically, for the moment, keep these as integer values and everything will be fine. And uh, we'll, we'll concern ourselves with that little problem next episode. So, until then, uh, thanks for watching. Cheers.